So what is AI washing and why should you care about it? Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel. My name is Dave Lenthicum, author, speaker, b geek, and here to talk to you about the truth of cloud computing and the utilization of generative AI for enterprises, getting the most value from this technology. Well, this is a topic uh, that I wanted to share because I've, I'm getting a lot of uh, questions about it, and I can understand why. Over the last two years, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're in the middle of a, of a, of a revolution, uh, uh, the tr uh, and actually this is accelerating probably three times as fast as cloud computing was accelerating back in 2008, 2009, when cloud computing first came around. And that, of course, is AI. you got to remember, AI technology has been around for a long time. I was working with AI technology when I was 18 years old, and I'm 62 now, So, but it's been around since the 50s. But in the last couple of years, the utilization of generative AI technology like ChatGPT, uh, Gemini, some of the other big LLMs out there and the ability to look at the amazing capabilities of this technology has shifted the industry focus to AI and AI capabilities. And this is driving some of the AI washing that's occurring today. So what is AI washing? Well, of course, I asked an LLM and it says that AI washing refers to rebranding or marketing of technology uh, as AI technologies, even when the AI element is minimal are non-existent. And so that means people are rebranding, reclaiming that AI is going to be part of their technology stack. And it doesn't seem to matter whether it is or not. And this is causing lots of confusion in the industry right now as people are trying to figure out how do you define something as AI powered and what does it mean to be AI powered? And are the technologies that are being branded as AI driven really leveraging AI to some advantage of the enterprise technology purchaser. So historical context of this is that we've had cloud washing and green washing has been around for a long time. Certainly the early days of cloud computing, everybody that had anything that existed within a data center was suddenly a private cloud. And uh, it didn't matter whether they had, you know, cloud features and capabilities or not, the ability to self-provision, the ability to auto scale, all these things that cloud computing is able to do. Everybody just called themselves a cloud. And I think that went on for about five years before people started getting a little wary of it. And a lot of technologies that were uh, branded as cloud it kind of fell away from that because it didn't really have the cloud capabilities. And we saw the same thing in uh, greenwashing. Well, greenwashing is basically where companies overstate their environmental initiatives, uh, their impact. In other words, they're focusing on renewables, uh, using renewables for different cloud technologies when there's probably not as much of sustainability efforts that are going on as they're claiming. And of course, that's because they're trying to get a larger market share. And now AI washing. Basically, everybody rebranding, repositioning their technology as something that's AI powered. I don't know if you noticed, but every cloud conference out there is now an generative AI conference. And even when I went to RSA a couple of weeks ago, which is a large computer uh, cybersecurity conference, Everything there uh, had some sort of an AI spin that they had on the products. And when you talk to the individual technology providers, there really wasn't much backing that up. So in other words, even though AI was on their um, their, their posting and their branding, uh, there was minimal, if not an existent use of AI when it came to using their technology. So how do we deal with that as technology professionals? We'll figure that out. So first, why is this occurring? Well, the benefits for the enterprise technology providers are going to be pretty good. Number one, there's increased market appeal. People uh, have a positive view of uh, things being able to leverage AI technology. And so obviously they're doing that because the uh, general public, the enterprise technology purchasers, are looking for that as kind of a, a checklist item. Oh, you're using AI. You're using, and, then, and they view that as a, a modern capability, and therefore the technology is going to be very modern or up to speed. The other thing would be higher valuations. In other words, these companies are existing either in public markets. Uh, they're attracting venture capital. And if they get higher valuations, they get uh, more money. So that's a, a kind of a greed aspect of that. So in other words, if you're an AI-powered technology, uh, the investors are going to take a favorable look on that. The, the uh, uh, private equity market's going to take a favorable look on that. And they're going to provide you with a better valuation than if you didn't leverage AI. And also the perception. Uh, so everything is seen as future looking. And if you have AI technology that's part of your stack, 
they view you as someone who's innovative in the space. Uh, but of course, if everybody's leveraging AI, uh, it's not necessarily a key differentiator out there, but uh, people are leveraging it. So they're pulling that AI trigger to get them more visible in the market, to get them higher valuations, and to really just kind of modernize what their existing technology does. So what are some of the downsides for the enterprise technology providers? Well, the first one would be distrust. I found myself when I was talking to the uh, vendors out on the RSA floor, uh, when I figured out that there really wasn't a lot of AI technology they were supporting in their in their product stack, even though that's what they were uh, uh, advertising it as, uh, that, oh, suddenly I'm going to put a question mark after everything they say. Uh, and so that's going to be a downside of this. And I think enterprise technology purchasers are going to see uh, that there's uh, uh, emperor has no clothes, so to speak. There's not a lot of technology actually backing up the claims to AI. And I think that's going to cause uh, some distrust in the marketplace. Also overpayment. Clients may be paying a premium uh, for the AI features when they're not there. Uh, this is uh, such a, a problem that uh, some of the government agencies are looking at this uh, for potential fraud cases. The SEC, for example, you'll see the article up on the screen, is bringing um, uh, fraud, uh, uh, fraud charges and, and suing companies for uh, advertising themselves as leveraging AI when they don't leverage AI. Also, complexity and integration issues. Um, integrating tech, AI technology that's not really AI technology into existing workflows flows may need to additional complexity without the benefits. And we certainly talked about the downsides of complexity here. This just kind of muddies up the water and kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to use that technology. So how can you avoid leveraging technology that's being um, spun to be AI enabled or AI powered? Uh, when it's not and not falling into the whole AI traps that are out there right now. First and foremost, ask a lot of questions. Don't take their word for the fact that it has AI powered or we're using AI capabilities. Talk to them about specifically what they're doing, whether it's cloud technology or on-premise premises technology, to leverage AI. What value is it bringing? Uh, what systems are you leveraging? Even talk to them about the different AI tool sets that are being integrated into the product. If they're evasive or they don't want to answer the questions or uh, some of them may simply say that we have a partnership foregoing, in other words, it's AI technology to be, they don't have it in there now, but they're still advertising it as uh, AI powered, um, that's going to be a red flag. Uh, that's going to create some distrust and I probably would avoid purchasing uh, technology from that particular technology provider or cloud provider, uh, either or on demand or on, on premises, something we buy as a traditional on premise service, the same rules apply. Uh, check references. Uh, in other words, uh, who else is using this technology? Call them up. Are they successful with it? Are they leveraging it to effective end state? Uh, and are the AI features and functions providing additional value for leveraging the technology? Uh, and do the research. In other words, look at the analyst firms. Uh, be very wary there because sometimes they're, um, there's a bit of a uh, bias there for people who are gonna be customers of the analyst firms. But uh, read all you can about that particular technology stack. Uh, talk to people who are leveraging it on LinkedIn. Look at the reviews, things like that. Some of them could be misleading. In other words, negative reviews that, that around something that probably was unfairly attributed to the, uh, uh, to the technology product. But where there's smoke, there's fire. And you're seeing a lot of negative reviews, a lot of uh, uh, issues that people are having with the technology. There's normally going to be some reality behind it. Also, ask yourself, does it matter? In other words, a lot of people are branding something as AI powered when it really doesn't need to be AI powered. There's nothing in the capabilities of the technology that's going to get any benefit from leveraging AI technology, other than the fact it's gonna to add to the cost and add to the complexity of the technology, add to the administration capabilities, add to the operational costs. So there may not be an upside to these technology stacks leveraging AI technology in the first place. And so I would be a bit concerned there. So if it's a traditional system, like maybe a, a inventory control system that's being delivered as a SaaS product, accounting systems, things like that, more traditional systems, uh, and if they seem to be force-fitting AI into those systems, um, that could be a little concerning because it's not going to matter in many instances, certainly not in all instances, if the AI technology is in there or not in their particular technology stack. So. 
what can you do about all this? Well, buyer beware, caveat emptor. Um, you need to do your research. You need to ask the questions. You need to figure out uh, if the claims are being made around utilization of AI is going to be uh, true and it's adding value to the technology stack. And those two questions should be asked. In other words, how are you integrating AI? What value is it adding? What capabilities are you providing that you didn't provide before that AI is responsible for doing that? And also ask yourself whether it's, it really matters or not, whether this is just a marketing claim uh, that you should ignore or pay attention to. That's kind of up to you, depending on what the technology does. Obviously, some technology can benefit hugely from integration of AI technologies, others not so much. And so we have to have a pragmatic look of utilization of this technology. So get the balanced approach. Um, be wary that this is going to be an issue that you're going to have to uh, pay attention to, at least for the next three or four years. Uh, and now that we're in the middle of this AI gold rush that's going on in the uh, cloud computing field and also the enterprise technology field, um, and look at the pragmatic expectations and utilization of this technology and understand these things are going to happen from time to time. We had greenwashing, we had cloud washing, uh, certainly service oriented architecture washing prior to that. And we're going to have another technology trend where everybody just kind of dashes and runs behind it, joins the parade and starts repositioning their technologies around this new trend, whether it's using that technology or not. Well, that's going to do it, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to comment below. Let me know what you want to hear about. Let me know the topics you want me to cover. Uh, the channel's growing like crazy. We're at about 52,000 subscribers right now, heading to 100,000, hopefully by the end of the summer. Tell your friends, uh, tell your colleagues about this uh, YouTube channel, and we'll keep it growing. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers.